Rob Oliphant is a member of the Canadian House of Commons and a United Church minister. Today, Rob made a brave revelation, while studying to be a minister, he endured conversion therapy, the discredited practice where quacks try to turn a gay person straight. In an inspiring sermon, he called on the church to reject hate and embrace love and acceptance for LGBTQ people. Becoming an affirming congregation is about owning the past and about all the flaws and failings of the Christian tradition when it comes to not having been inclusive and welcoming for so many people. I grew up in this United Church of ours. We had posters in our Sunday school everywhere that said, live love. But through all those years, I had a secret. I was different. And I knew I was different from the age of 12 or 13. I liked boys the way other boys like girls, but no one knew. And despite the shared belief that we had that God is love, I didn't feel safe to tell anyone who I really was. When I returned to the Sioux after university, I co-led the confirmation class at Central. I went to Bible study with probably the most important theological teacher I had in my whole life. Her name was Eileen Haddon. And through all of that, I began to sense that I had a call to ministry, but I was nervous about it. How could I have a call to ministry in the United Church and ever live as an openly gay person? I found in Eileen someone I could talk to, and I shared with her my thoughts. I told her I wasn't sure I could do it. She sent me to a colleague at a neighboring church at Willow Grove United in Sault Ste. Marie. She sent me to Don White, and through a lot of tears, I told him the whole story. And he received it with grace and love and care. He only made one mistake. He sent me to a psychologist. Unbeknownst to Don and catching me by surprise, I found myself in what is now known as conversion therapy. Conversion therapy is insidious because it plays on all the self-doubts and the self-hatred that 2S LGBTQI plus people have. It pretends to offer a path to a so-called normal life. You can live that way, but no one will know who you are. So I went back to Eileen and I told her the whole story this time. I think I got the longest hug that I've ever had in my whole life. Eileen held me and told me, that's not who God is. That's not what Jesus has taught us. And that's not who the United Church is or should be. I finally came out to the ordination panel and then London conference and gave them a headache because they didn't know what to do with an openly gay man. They ordained me anyway. Then in 1988, our church overwhelmingly decided that being lesbian or gay, two-spirited, was not a barrier to ministry. It was reaffirmed a couple of years later. 1990, we as a denomination declared that we would do and honor same-sex relationships with covenanting services. We led the way for Canada, finally throughout the whole country in 2005, to legalize same-sex marriage, equal marriage rights. 2006, Mark and I got married. Think of how far we have come in this United Church of ours. And now Grace United Church has decided not just to be welcoming, not just to be inclusive, not just to be nice, but to engage in changing the world. It's not that hard to be open. It's harder to be angry. It's harder to be mean. It's harder to be frustrated. It's easier to be loving. We see God in differences in this congregation. And becoming an affirming congregation means we accept that, we live that, and we love that. God wants us to do it not only because we see God and see others that way, it draws us closer to God. Help us fight ex-gay lies. Truth Wins Out monitors, researches, and exposes the ex-gay conversion industry. Support us and learn more at truthwinsout.org.